Hi, and welcome to another Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom, and on today's show, I meet a webcomic artist uh, who goes by the name Awesomeness Studios online. Now, if you follow this show, you know that I draw a daily webcomic, and mine is autobiographical. Mine is about something that happens to me each day, and I draw about that. But most webcomics that are online are people who have characters and stories. One of the places to promote your comics, there are different places online. Like, of course, I have my own website, and of course, I have Instagram. But there are actual webcomic sites out there that lots of creators post to. And one of those places, and I post there myself, is called tapas.io. It is specifically for webcomics. And there are tons of webcomic creators and artists and writers and it has a flourishing community in its forums. The forums that are on there, people helping each other. That's the thing about doing webcomics. Webcomics and artists who make them, they all support each other. And that's what I discovered at this site. And that's actually how I found this person who I talked to today. One day I was just posting on Tapas and I asked a question. I just said, what are some other comics that I should follow? What are some of your favorite comic artists? And this person responded and mentioned like listed like 12 comics that I should totally check out and why. And I thought that was super cool. And that's one of the beauties of the web comics community is just the way that they support each other. You're all drawing other comics. People will say they like a storyline. They'll say they really like your artwork. It It's kind of cool. So when I actually emailed my mailing list and said, Hey, just sign up on my Facebook page to do the show. If you want to be on the podcast, this person signed up. She creates several different comics. I love the fact that she gets an idea, she gets passionate about it, and she, when she gets bored with it or when she decides it's gone as far as it goes, she moves on. She creates something else. I think it's really cool. She wants to go to college for art. She thinks that she might want to do animation, she might want to do comics, but she's feeling it out and actually building her portfolio. And we talk a little bit about that. We talk about how she got started in art, why she makes comics, and how she comes up with her ideas. And it was just really cool to talk to her. It reminded me of the first season of this podcast when I met uh, Selma Carrion, who was doing things with her friends and coming up with ideas, going out and drawing art. They would do it as a group. Selma, when I talked to her, wanted to be a tattoo artist. And uh, we're still connected online, and she actually is a tattoo artist now. So I think that's really cool that she got to do what she wanted. And I wonder and I hope the person that I'm talking to today actually gets that opportunity as well and does get to do the career that she is building up to do. Also, if you're hearing this podcast for the first time, don't forget to go to tomreyswebsite.com where you can subscribe to the show. It's on all of the platforms. You can check out my webcomic there. And uh, you can also check out my video vlog where I document things that I do during the day, including running my own business by collecting and selling vintage and collectible toys and books and illustrated books and stuff like that online and selling them. Anyway, here is my interview with Awesomeness Studios on Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I make web comics. One reason that I wanted to talk to you, and actually you reached out to me to schedule the, uh, an interview on the show, which was fantastic because I literally was going to contact you to see if you wanted to talk with me on the show because I've kind of known you through the web comic site Tapas. And, and one of the things I wanted to bring up, and this is why I was wanting to reach out to you is because uh, they, on Tapas, even though it's not used as much, there's a way for you on your profile to do posts. And I feel like you get an alert that someone did a post and, you know, nobody really sees it because they're there to re read web comics. <laughs> but one time I was like, what are some other web comics I should read? And you gave me like a full detailed list. And I thought that was so awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I really like web comics and I... Uh, whenever anyone is interested in web comics, like I'm just ready to like tell them about because I, I I've read plenty of web comics, especially since I joined Tapas. Um, 
because you can find so many there. Mm -hmm. And I'm very interested in showing people like, hey, here's some other things that other people have made too. Yeah, you're very supportive on there. And I really dig that. And I only just got started on Tapas like a few years ago. And it, it, and I mean, just the whole thing where I, I'm just glad that now there are places to actually do web comics rather than like you just can only post it on your site. Um, and how, how did you get started drawing web comics? I'm not exactly sure how, but I remember like when I several a couple several years ago, I uh, found like uh, some web comics online. There was like I think the first one that I read was this cute little cat comic. It was called Dr. Cat, and um, it was basically about a cat doctor, and like, oh, <laughs> it was very interesting. And after reading it, I was like, huh, I wonder if there are more web comics out there that I would like. And so I did some searching, and then I found this. Um, I somehow found another cat web comic. I'm not even like, I'm I'm not even that much of a cat person, but I just found cat comics, and I found another one called Gamer Cat, which was about a cats who played video games and that was very interesting i found on the website that you can read this comic on tapas and i was like oh i wonder what tapas is like and so i went to the website and i found that it was it was this comic sharing site now they do not web novels too but before it was just web comics and I found an interest in them and I read some and then I made an account so I could get notifications and I realized, hey, I could make that too because I wanted to like create animated TV series for quite a while before that. And but like I, you know, I couldn't really do that. But I was like, oh, maybe one day I'll get there. And I was thinking, well, I could probably showcase my stories with comics right now. You want to do animated series? Uh, well, I've been wanting that for quite some time. Now I'm thinking like, because I hear stuff about the industry and like, um, how like kind of difficult it can be to like be successful in it and really get the ideas that you want out there. So if it doesn't turn well for me, maybe I'll even go into comics professionally. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. Yeah. But but making a TV, making a cartoon would be great too. Yeah. And do you, how did you, uh, how did you get started drawing? Like what were some of the things that you started out with as far as like the style of drawing or what made you go, I'm going to learn how to draw? I don't know. For, for all my life, I've kind of been interested in the arts and I really liked cartoons growing up. And well, uh, I, there was one time, um, Disney had this website called Disney Create where uh, basically it was it was just kind of like an art sharing site but for like kids and like they shut it down several years ago sadly but that's kind of where I really got started I uh well at least digitally like that's where I kind of started to take it seriously because I saw all these kids you know making their art and I was like wow maybe I could do that too and like this is where I started to develop my style my style has come a long way but I'm pretty sure that the first influence of it was My Little Pony. I didn't even watch My Little Pony growing up. But on Disney Create, I don't know why Disney allowed this, but they were like, okay, I guess. Uh, Some kids were like making My Little Pony characters and they were just drawing them. And like, you know, like Disney had to moderate the site because like they they had to approve every single drawing because they like like it's a kid's site. (laughs) They have to approve of every single drawing that gets uploaded before it gets published, oh. uh, which is why it would take forever for art to come out. But still, people were doing it. So somehow they they allowed people to make My Little Pony characters. I guess they were like, "Well, screw copyright laws." And right. um, and I saw these characters and I was like, "Wow, these ponies look cute." And then I tried drawing my own. I tried drawing pony versions of other characters. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, from there, I was like, okay, what if I like take this style and like I draw something else that looks like it? And um, nowadays, I'm more experimenting with different kind of styles, but I think they kind of all branch off this sort of style I developed at a at a younger age. Yeah. Um, 
I know like something that's that's very noticeable in like some of my art is like just the eye. like it's very cartoony most of the time mm -hmm. and like they have these nice big eyes and I think like that's the closest to my little pony it is right now <laughs> the eyes I like now they're very different but like if you kind of see the evolution of the eyes over time yeah you could you could kind of see the, the where they came from so, yeah and that goes back to the first comic that I know that you put out was um, called The Wonderful World of Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah. Personally, I'm not that big of a fan of it because it was like my first comic and I'm like... Oh, of course. Nobody yeah, loves the I don't first like, thing like, they I put don't, out. <laughs> yeah. I don't like many of the things that I... I don't know. It, it's kind of cringy to me nowadays, but that's good because, you know, I'm learning past that. Well, what made you... Uh, even start like how did you decide this is the story that I'm going to write like because along with drawing the comics I mean it's it's one thing to just draw pictures but another thing to start writing a story and coming up with a theme like how did you first delve into even coming up with concepts and stories and characters okay so for the wonderful world of whatever it's you know very um it's kind of supposed to be a gag a day thing but there's not really much of a story except for like the fact that they're all like drawings living on a in a computer i, I don't know i was trying to emphasize that a lot but yeah. i don't know if, it was in the description i think but like i don't know if it was very clear i i actually this came from an idea of a tv show that i had that like it was about characters that live in in a in a computer and like they kind of didn't know what like how their world worked they like didn't know that they were merely drawings and they were just kind of like living like this yeah and i decided hey what if i like make a prequel to that and then when i finally get around to making a tv show it's like oh this is the continuation of it so over time um i think like towards the end of the, of the comic i was like you know what like the prequel thing this is just gonna be like its own thing Mm -hmm. But basically it is, uh, it was supposed to be a prequel to that about like, oh, uh, how this world like started being drawn. And like, that's why I purposely didn't draw backgrounds because I just wanted like to make it look as like drawn as possible, not, not like a real world. I kind of wanted just yeah. like the characters to be existing in this void. And then over time I would draw backgrounds, but then I was like, I'm kind of getting tired of this series. So then I can't stopped it i kind of uh, so two things on that one uh you also kind of experimented with color that's when you first started experimenting with coloring them in because you would mm -hmm. do just line drawings and then you started coloring them in and i do like how you would openly go like as you're doing the comic even though it was a thing you would add in your own insight and the you actually have a couple of series where uh comics on uh tapas where you will post the last one and go you know what this one's starting to bore me it's not interesting anymore i'm going to do a different one <laughs> I kind, yeah i kind of love that it's just you're not doing it because it's like oh well i have so many followers you you start over and you know some people come with you some don't and i love that so it, it i i think yeah. i think that's really cool that you're being honest about it and, the, and even from that like you ended that and i think that was the thing you said you're like i don't know what i'm going to do next and then you did create another one which was what was that that was the four friendly the four friendly humors oh, yes i had that idea while i was making the wonderful world of whatever um so this is actually an interesting story i think the story the story behind this one is much more interesting okay <laughs> Okay, maybe it's not, but it's, I'm sure I think it is. it's kind of cool. So um, I was like reading uh, a textbook. It was um, it was a textbook for school and like it, it was history, I think. Yeah, it was definitely history. And we were looking at like medieval history and there was like a small section, like they were talking about medicine. And then like, I think one sentence mentioned something about humorism and like basically gave the very brief description on it. And I was like, huh, that's actually interesting. <laughs> so then I did more research on it. And I was like, wow, I could like make this into a comic or something. Mm -hmm. So I posted the comic, at least like saying, oh, this is coming soon, maybe. And like, yeah, the four friendly humors, it's going to be about the four humors. And uh, yeah. 
And then as I worked on Wonderful World of Whatever, you know, I got tired of it. And then I stopped and I was like, okay, I'll just return to the four friendly humors. Maybe it's, maybe it'll be a good series. Mm -hmm. And uh, I enjoy it a lot. It's actually very fun to make. And like, it's so fun that like, wow, even after it ended, I made a spinoff. The this, this spinoff, I was like, I have to do a spinoff because as I was doing research on the humors, I like... The websites are weird, but like I stumbled upon like that at some point someone like made a five humor theory and they added mm -hmm. another personality. And I was like, that's that's a good idea for a spinoff. It didn't feel right to include him in the main series. So I was like, OK, yeah. I'll like get started on the four friendly humors. I'll make it like a 20 episode mini series. Then when I'm done with that. I'm just going to make a spin off of that about the fifth one. I love it. You're and, like yeah. doing executive producing on your own comic and you're like, well, this one would probably be better as its own spin off series. So it, it, <laughs> I love that you realize yeah. that. And so you're saying that now the one that you're drawing now, the doing fine supine, supine. that is the spin off. That's the spin off. Cause uh, and which one is the, so you added a character that to that one is what you're saying. Yes. Uh, based on, the humor supine um, yeah the four friendly humors i i had like a set goal to like do just 20 episodes because i also wanted this to be as practice like you know make a sm short series see if i can like do something with just a few characters instead of a lot of characters like um the wonderful world of whatever yeah and then after that i can try something else because i always want to learn something new with every series i make so that i can make something really that something that I'm really proud of later on. And then when you started the the new spin-off series, what was your thinking behind that? Did you have a plan or were you just continuing it and now it has an extra person? Well, this one it's um this one I wanted to be a story like instead of a gag a day comic where like the characters are just doing something, I wanted an actual plot to happen. And like this this like I I have to tell you I thought of a spin-off before even starting the four friendly humor like <laughs> i'm really already thinking had ahead <laughs> i had this whole plan in mind but i was like hmm there's a new character this one was added in more recent times um like i think i don't know i think on wikipedia it was like the 50s or something i'll have to check that out yeah because it's like not an official thing like like it's not actually a serious thing in medicine but like or psychology but whatever um but i I um so I felt like okay they're at it this is a new person this is a new this is a new personality it should be a new person maybe I'll make it about how the original four react to this new character mm -hmm. and since like you know in my story I represent them as like these four characters and they live together and they're just like they're just kind of like average well they, they don't look like average people but like they are basically average people living in the world it's just that they they have these like funny personalities yeah and um i was like okay this is a new character how about they all react to their reactions to this new character and as i kept like as eventually when it came time to like focus on this comic like like when i finally finished the four friendly humors i was like okay how am i going to approach doing fine supine mm -hmm. i thought okay so um i tried to get more into detail about the plot so this story is like I'm trying to avoid gag a day stuff and really like tell something. So I decided to focus on one of the characters. Well, really two of the characters, but um, one of them is really taking uh, center stage, Sanguine. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I thought it would be a good idea because um, like his, his personality is supposed to be like... Um, the more extroverted one it's um yes like more friendly and open to people and so i was like okay he would be the one most willing to interact with this new character and and then um the humor choleric that's supposed to be it's also supposed to be extroverted and like, look at me, I sound like I'm an expert on this. I just like read a bunch of websites and I was like, this that's, sounds interesting. That's how everybody gets their information these yeah. days. 
<laughs> yeah, and so basically this humor is supposed to be um like also also sort of extroverted but more like aggressive and like not really showing so much uh, emotion to other people and also as oftentimes the one that protects uh, their um, friends and other people mm -hmm. and so I was like okay this this is a good dynamic what if we have Sanguine try to approach this new uh, character and like I and a little bit if you can see in the comics you see kind of choleric like trying to like yeah I'm looking stop through him, him right now as you're talking <laughs> yeah like he's trying to stop him from talking to him However, of course, he's not really the main focus of this story. Um, like, eventually you'll see him, I plan, I'm, I'm not done writing it, but, like, I plan to eventually, like, have him talk to Sanguine again. Mm -hmm. But, like, you know, um, with how Sanguine is, he kind of just, like, you know, doesn't really listen to him and continues to talk to Supine. And um, with the way how Supine, um, the humor is supposed to work, the personality, it's, supposed to be more introverted mm -hmm. and like wants want has like um like one website described it as like a mix between melancholy and sanguine and you're and saying one like, website described the concept you're talking about not your cartoon yeah. yeah the concept okay the concept um as like basically people who want to express but they can't really do it and they're like a little more shy and they kind of assume that everybody understands how they're feeling, and that's going to be a major part of the story. Yeah. Um, with if you see how they interact, you might be able to see that a little bit right now. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, I was like, okay, this could be good. Like basically, this is a story about like people who are more extroverted and are more excited about things, uh, talking to interacting with people who are more quiet about things and really like the flaws that go both ways. I'm mm -hmm. not trying to get too deep with it because it's just a fun story, but like I guess it really kind of shows that of like how two kind of different personalities and people interact with each other and like hey can, like hey can people with two different personalities like be good friends right. we'll have to keep reading and see <laughs> there's your tagline <laughs> yeah and the other thing too is while i'm looking at these and going through i mean talking with you i have all the past comics <laughs> that you've done open and i'm going through them and with the drawing style that we talked about before, what are you doing to create these comics? Like, what are you using? Now you've got the outlines are done in color. You're coloring them in, putting in backgrounds. So, like, what tools are you using and how do you go about creating the comic? Okay, so I got my, I got my computer. I got, it's, it's a laptop. So, yeah, I have my laptop. I have my drawing tablet. Okay. Um, and the program I use is Medibang Paint. So do I. And I love yeah, that program. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Like, I, I I saw someone use it like on uh someday one day like in a in a speed paint, and I was like, huh, I wonder how that's like. And then I found out it was free, and I was like, this is great. Exactly. So, <laughs> so I've been using it basically ever since the wonderful world of whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, the way how I go about making comics is um, so. For the gag a day ones, the one that's like things are just kind of happening, I wrote down like n notes. Um, so like on my computer, I wrote down basically what I, the gist of each episode, the gist of each comic of like what happens, like, oh, um, this person is like mad about something or like someone is, um, I, I'm thinking of things off the top of my head, no, not even fine. like examples, but like, let's say I write down like, oh, someone is talking about how hungry they are. And like, I just write down like, like one sentence ideas yeah. of like what's going on. Um, in fact, for the wonderful world of whatever, I used to like write them down in a book. But then over time, I didn't like most of the ideas. They were kind of they were they were pretty cringy. So I like just scrapped that and like just wrote them wrote new ideas on my computer, and that carried over to the four friendly humors. For doing fine supine, I wanted to practice writing a story, not just events that happen on the daily. Right. So I decided. Okay, I, I made a note, uh, like in the notes app on my Mac, and um, 
uh, it's it's really just like it's just titled "The Four Friendly Humors: Doing Fine Supine," and it's just a checklist of the whole plot. So, like, um, basically, each, each check, each bullet point is supposed to be like um, an episode or like a couple of episodes. And like, as I draw each one, I just check it off, and yeah. then I like, well, when I'm done drawing it, I check it off, and like, um, and and then this this allows me to know sort of what happens in the beginning, what happens in the end, and what's going on generally in the middle, while allowing me to get surprised and like see what's happening. Because I've heard that some webcomic artists do that, that they, um, I've heard that some of them just like decide to like just write the, come up with like the beginning, the ending, and then just kind of like a general idea of what happens. Like fill it in while you're going along? Yeah, so that they can be surprised. Other people write scripts, and I'm like, that right. seems interesting, but I wanted to try out, like, just kind of, like, winging it. And I thought that was very interesting, because at one point I read um, this, like, guy that uh, one artist on Tapas made about, like, basically just, like, tips and advice for how to make web comics, mm-hmm. how to make your story, like, better, how to make the art better. But I, I saw something about the story. Things, you know, start out okay, but not as great. And then, like, towards the end, as, like, things begin to go wrong, things make things, like, basically as bad as possible in the end. Um, not, like, totally bad, but just, like, you know, like, you know oh, how like in conflict. a hero's journey, you know how in a hero's journey, like, things things happen to the main character yeah. and like, you know, each trial becomes a little difficult, but they learn from stuff. And then at the end they have to like surpass a big task. Mm-hmm. And like, sometimes you see in movies that before that happens, things start to go very badly for them and they have to use what they learn to like overcome that. And that kind of just makes their jump much greater and makes the story more interesting. And so I read that and I looked back at my notes and I was like, you know, the ending of doing fine supine um, could be better. It was kind of lackluster. Like, I, I don't want to spoil so much, yeah. but like, uh, basically it, it seemed like, nah, like it didn't really like show like something bad going happen. It Things won't go like terribly bad. I'm just saying because it's like, it wouldn't fit the theme of my story, but basically I decided to rewrite the ending and make it, make things like a little bit worse like mm-hmm. for our characters but right. basically something that will test um whether or not they can be friends yeah really and i get and what you're so, saying like one of the things uh, the reason that that kind of advice is good is because especially when drawing a comic it's so one thing i've noticed is when you get to the last panel it feels so much like you want to resolve it like or put in the punchline or like the last one has to be like but um bum or you know whatever and yeah. it's and leaving it hanging or kind of stretching it over into the next one is seems like good av- advice especially for something like yours that is being more serialized yeah that that's what i kind of wanted to practice like how can i make like you know how to write a good story and when it comes to like web comics usually each update if it's even if it's serialized it like has to like resolve in some sort of way Mm -hmm. but if it's serialized you kind of want to hint that like something else is going to happen in the next update that's why you should keep reading so um because i've been trying to do that and like i think i i think i'm kind of you know getting good at it yeah it feels the story feels like it's flowing i i think to me how long does people seem to like it how long does it take you to uh, do one of your comics? Um, like one episode, one page. Yeah. yeah. Um, it it will like take uh, several hours. Well, it really depends on how simple it is. Um, I don't really keep track of the time much, but I I'm gonna put it at like maybe the average one would be three to four hours. I'm not the best at estimating. I don't like usually do them in one sitting. Usually, I'll be like one to two hours like starting it out and then like oh you know I I stop for the day like I take a break and then like another day I'll like keep it up there are occasional times where I'll be able to like do it all in one sitting Mm -hmm. but usually um it takes it takes that long and like this is like me trying to draw things pretty easily and like simply and uh, for my next comic 
um, whatever it may be. Like I, I already have an idea, but for my next comic, oh. I want I want to like make it a little more detailed. I noticed that like um, in the four friendly humors series in the comics, um, in both of them, the backgrounds are very simplistic, mm-hmm. and like the characters are so, themselves are simplistic. But I sometimes feel like the backgrounds are like kind of unsatisfyingly simplistic. I don't know. That's yeah, my opinion. Yeah. And like, you know, I feel like it's might be a little too late to change that. Like, I feel like I established that aesthetic already. Um, but for my next comic, I want to make it like actually like nice looking, like polished backgrounds and like the characters really blend in. Cause I, I wanted for, for the four friendly humors, for both of the comics, I wanted to like make the characters stand out. That's why the humans, they don't really have like designs. They're kind of just like these, they're, they're just like the head and like a body. Yeah. And it's just like, they're not even colored in. Cause I was just like, you know, this isn't about them. This is, this is about my characters here. So I need to establish that they exist because they are living in a human world, but like, who cares about them? You know, they can, uh-huh. they just exist. Like they only have so many interactions with them. And even like one of the episodes of the original series, basically I was trying to like imply that they don't really talk much to humans. They mostly talk to themselves, <laughs> which kind of is part of, uh, th- that's kind of an important detail for doing fine supine, just so you know, yeah, the yeah. fact that they really only talk to themselves. Have you, just to go back on the background thing, have you ever messed around with the option in Medibang Paint um, where you can, they, they have like those manga backgrounds that you can drop into the panels? I have not tried that because like, I, I don't really feel like it would fit. Maybe I don't either. Maybe I just always find it so, it, it's so funny because when I look at them, yeah. there's like maybe five choices and I'm like, so what are they just going to be in the exact same background every time? Like it doesn't seem <laughs> useful. Like broaden your library a little bit. <laughs> but it is yeah. an interesting option. I do sometimes wish they would build on it because what I've found is drawing backgrounds, it takes so much longer to put all that detail into stuff that's just in the background. That's why I'm wondering, like, yeah. you know, you've got the background, you're using colors to show the separation. So that's why I, I was wondering how long it took you to do it because if you were to do backgrounds, it would add to it. But I mean, are there other things that you do too? Or is like web comics kind of like the one obsession or the one creative outlet you have? Or do you have oh. some other things that you kind of do? Oh, well, um, I have uh, my Instagram page and like there you can kind of just see um, like, like there are times where, uh, yeah, you know, my Instagram page, mm-hmm. I will sometimes like draw um, my, my own standalone things. Sometimes they're like, um, Sometimes they're original characters. Some, a lot of the times I like to do fan art because fan art is just very fun. I just draw things that interest me. Um, and like now Inkto- well, Inktober and like really. Oh yeah, you're participating I, I, in I, that, I, I see. I, I, I like to really call it like art prompt October because during the month of October, like every single art prompt that you can think of just appears on the internet. <laughs> True. Um, yeah, and especially this year, people are, like, turning away from the official Inktober list. Like, I'm actually doing someone else's list right now. Oh. And, um, yeah, and, yeah, I'm, I plan to, like, so you'll be seeing some ink drawings during this month. And are you doing them digital ink or are you doing actual inking? Uh, I'm doing actual nice. inking. I like, I like taking this time to, like, practice how to draw with ink. Um, I think the first Inktober that I participated in really helped me get comfortable with ink because like before I really didn't draw with ink, it was either like pencils or digital. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? I have to learn how to do this. I should (laughs) take advantage. And so I tried doing it and my ink drawings weren't that great in my opinion, but they were, they still look nice. Yeah. Um, And then after that, I, you know, I tried to like do it regularly um, when it comes to traditional stuff. And now occasionally you'll see me doing, um, if I'm doing something traditionally, I'll usually, uh, I'll many times put ink. Um, it's either like a, like a really good sketch or I'll use ink. Um, so like some recent stuff I posted were ink drawings. Okay. Yeah. What are you inking with? Are you using a brush or a quill pen or a mechanical pen? Like what, what are, what's your inking tool? Uh, like, 
like I'm not really like so serious so much about like artist tools. Like the last thing I did was with a Sharpie pen. Like I, that's perfectly I did fine. That's what drawing. Tim Burton uses. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I did one drawing that was like full on like Sharpie pen. Once I did something with a Sharpie marker for the past two years for Inktober, I'm pretty sure I use like regular ballpoint pens. Yeah. And that yeah. would be like the space rabbit that you drew or the, the recent one that you did uh, just today, I think was yeah, the those, eyes those, one. Those recent ones were um, with the Sharpie pen. Okay. Yeah, no, I'd, that's perfectly fine to use that. I was just curious what yeah. you did use. When I first started following you, there was a link to your YouTube page and I went there and you had some drawing videos. And now on your YouTube page, there's there are no videos there anymore. So uh, tell me about the videos you used to have on there and you know, what was going on with that YouTube page? Okay. I, so the videos, they were just kind of like uh, me, like tr I was trying to really be like, you know, one of those story time animators that they kind of just talk about like their lives and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was, that was like cool. But then after some time I fell out of interest. Um, I it, fell out it of happened interest. Again. It. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know what? This isn't really my thing. I, yeah, I realized I wasn't really much of an animator. Like, like I, I, I kind of got tired of like animating, and mm -hmm. so I decided, okay, um, I did like make one kind of like story, which maybe I'll put it back because it was like kind of I was I actually kind of liked the story, yeah. it was, like a Christmas, uh, like it was a little Christmas poem. I just like kind of wrote one day on my tablet, yeah, <laughs> just just out of nowhere, and um, but yeah, I got rid of the videos because I was like you know, this isn't really something I want to do. I kind of like gave up on that and I didn't really want to keep doing stuff. I like, I, when I first joined Tapas, I was like, follow my YouTube channel and like, I'll try to do these videos and stuff. But like, and I asked people like for requests about what should I talk about? But then I kind of like lost interest in that. And I realized I really liked comics. So I focused on the comics instead. And I was like, okay, I'll just like stop this YouTube channel. I didn't feel like deleting it because I still yeah. kind of use it to like watch videos. Yeah, you still and need comments. it to have an account. And yeah, yeah. I, I did like make another YouTube channel. Not, not, not really much there, but like, yeah, I kind of stopped using the Awesomeness Studios channel. The stuff that I had didn't really show the best I could do. So that's why I felt like removing them. Right. And I love the fact that you're just like, again, I'm not into this anymore, so eh, I'm going to delete it. That's the beauty of the internet. You can just get yeah. rid of it. I mean, uh, unless people like tons and tons of people follow you and everybody's screen sharing it and has it all over the place. But when you're starting out and doing things, it's like, yeah, you can test things out. And if you don't like it, move on, go somewhere else. So yeah, I, 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 I don't want to like, I don't want to look like a uh, kind of person that's just like, oh, I'm bored of this. I'll like stop it because no, I, I, no, do no, no. I don't take I it that do way. That, yeah. I don't want, I like, I, I I try to stick to it until I'm like, I can't really kind of make anything of quality with this. Like, I don't really feel like, like, even if I get a little like unmotivated, I'll try to finish it. Like with the four friendly humors, uh, I had a goal for 20 episodes. And towards the end, I was like, I don't really know what else I can really make them do. Yeah. And so I was like, but I'm going to stick to the 20 episodes because I said I would. And I still like Good. these characters. So yeah. I kept going and I tried to get to the end and it was, it was, it was fun. I didn't feel like, Oh, I'm finally glad that's over. I felt like, yay, I accomplished this comic. Yeah. I like the characters that I make and I hope to use them for future things. Too. I think that's the best way to think about it. So what would you say is one of the difficult things about you wanting to do web comics or like, what are some of the problems that you face wanting to do this and just even art in general? Uh, I think the lack of time sometimes yeah. I'm kind of a busy person and like, I, I just, I, I would like to be able to do this as, as like something artistic as a job and like that I hope I'll be able to have time. That's part of the reason why I like try to do only weekly updates. Like sometimes I wish I could do faster, like, like twice a week updates, but I'm just like, I don't know if like, eventually the buffer will like get too quick uh like like the buffer will go away too quickly and then I, i'll have to like go on hiatus again right and you know like you know hiatuses are normal for web comics like they happen all the time but i'm just like 
I, you know, got to try to avoid them as much as possible. I'm trying my best that maybe doing fine supine will be short enough to avoid hiatuses. The four friendly humors ended up having a hiatus at one point. Yeah. But I made sure that the buffer for doing fine supine was big enough that it probably won't happen. Let's see. Well, how do you make up the time for it? Because, um, I, I mean, do you have a method that you at least try to follow or... Do you uh, set aside a set aside a set aside scheduled time? For some reason, that was a hard sentence to say. Set aside scheduled time for uh, doing the comics, or like how do how how have you tried to overcome that? Uh, well, sometimes I will set aside scheduled time. See, it's hard for... to say, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes I will set aside scheduled times for for uh, making comics. Uh, however, that usually isn't so possible. So, um, like, uh, sometimes on the weekends, I might be able to, like, uh, make something. I know, like, during the summer, I'm, I'm uh, able to, like, do it. I'm, I have much more time, so I'm able to do something. I actually, like, had, like, for, like, maybe a whole month, I just kind of, like, had a certain time, like, in the morning. Oh, okay. To just, like, work on the comic. And I kept doing that, and that's how I kind of like kept the buffer going for quite a bit. Um, now, like, I, I have some days where I'm like, okay, I could do it at this time, mm -hmm. and I, I just try to find my best. Uh, I try to find the best times I have hmm. to make stuff. I, I try to find time, but I also um, want to make sure to have the motivation to to do it. Oh yeah, because I I don't want to like work on something, but like also feel like bored and tired of doing it because you know as you know as it goes uh with anything creative if you're not really interested in it then like people will probably be able to tell and i don't want people to see that so i like i, I don't want to i don't always make sure that i'm like super interested but if like one day i'm just like really tired and not into it and i can't really write anything i'm just like okay i'll take a break today and I'll like go do something else fun. And like maybe another time I'll do it. And like one time I think that was really helpful. Like I was trying to make a comic and I was like, it wasn't really coming out well. So I like just scrapped it and I went and did something else. And then another day I worked on it. And I was like, oh, I have a good idea on like how I'm going to like represent this idea that I wrote in my notes. Yeah. In when it comes to making like comics, like as I said, I make a I made a list of like like one line sentence ideas and that kind of just allows me to like wing it as I go like um yeah this episode came out so like I can say like I wrote down as one of the episodes idea like they fly kites and like in that episode I was like okay how do I represent them like they're going to fly kites <laughs> but I have to make it like not end up so well because you know like it's supposed to be funny. <laughs> yeah. Like, and you I, can I dip into those old storylines yeah. or those thoughts that. It, yeah. That's actually kind of interesting. I'd like, uh, that's a good idea. I dig that. Mm -hmm. Just like writing down one line, like don't even worry about it. Go, Oh, here's a thing. Maybe I could build something off of that. And then later on when you're looking for inspiration, there it is. Yeah. And huh. like, I, you know, I said like, okay, uh, they fly kites. And like in the comic, you know, they, they try to do that, but uh, one of the kites just like gets lost, right. it just flies away. Yeah, like I came up with that idea on the fly because like I needed to show like there that like this kind of like forced friendship isn't really going so well. So, mm -hmm. you know, here's why. And then like future updates, like stuff like that will happen. So yeah. And here's something I wondered uh, with you're a person who, when you're done with a comic, you end it. How do you promote the new one that you're going to do? Or how do you get the word out about the new, the new ideas or the new series that you create when you do that? You know, on Tapas, they have a wall so I can like post uh, okay. stuff there and like send it as, as, um, and it sends as a notification to my followers. And, uh, so you use the, you use the, uh, the, the abilities that they have there yeah and yourself. like other things is like i know for um like on the tapas forum i asked like hey how can i like hype up this like new idea mm -hmm. like this spin-off and uh they were like oh you could like make a backdoor pilot which is like basically I saw that you did that i was wondering about that yeah 
Yeah, like a backdoor pilot where you basically put in the older series, like, hey, um, like this new thing is happening. And um, that, that, that therefore, like older readers can like know about the new thing. And like, you know, sometimes this happens on TV. You'll see like, like, I don't know, a character like leave to like go somewhere else. And then there's a new series about that character in that new place. Or yeah, um, or they'll have an episode that's strictly like the, a one-off. I I'm going to use a really dated example, but like on Three's Company, when the landlords, the Ropers, went off to do their own show, there was an entire episode that was about the Ropers on Three's Company. Anyway, I'm sure there are better examples I could think of instead of one that you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> that's all right, and um, you know, I also talk about it on my social media. So I have Instagram. I I'm. I use Discord, so I like tell oh, Discord you do. servers that I'm on. Like, like uh, there is this one server that I'm in that I basically just like. I was trying to be funny, but like also like plugging in my story. Like, hey guys, I make comics. You should probably like read this, and like you know, making jokes about like, hey, you should all read my comic, and like you know, now I have some people from that server reading my comics. How do you so, find the Discord yeah. servers that you're on? Like, like uh, how do you choose the ones you want to be on? I mean, I mean, usually I, I stick to ones that are made by people that I follow on the internet. So, you know, okay. my, my Instagram, you know, an, Insta, uh, an Instagrammer that I follow, like, they're like, oh, we're making a discord server. You should join. And I'm like, wow, I kind of think that person is cool. So I'll join in. Um, I've like joined like a couple of servers that were that like people advertised on the tapas forums. There's this one that I joined that's like uh, basically for Tapas creators. It's not an official server, but really? like some people, like some people were like, "Oh, hey, let's uh, make a a server," and they were like, "Hey, everybody, join the the, the the Tap Creators Avenue." And I joined it, and it was nice, and I get to talk to other people that create stuff there. So, what kind of stuff so, yeah. goes on in the the Tapas themed one? basically like art advice comic advice web novel advice you know people are talking people also talk about like their lives it, it's kind of mm -hmm. just a place to hang out and like talk about stuff that's kind of how all the servers i am are like okay uh, right now i asked someone like hey can can like anyone help me make a good art portfolio and uh like some someone like I'll, I'll answer them later but someone like said like oh what kind of portfolio so you know i was just gonna ask that same question <laughs> <laughs> yeah just a place to talk and like interact with other creators and gain support from them so what kind of art portfolio are you looking to make uh i guess what what would like, be the purpose of what you want to do with it is it would be okay. the more specific question like is it an art portfolio for comics or is it for animation or like like it kind of like showing the art i make it's really an art portfolio to go to college but yeah right <laughs> um of course i would you know i guess i could also adapt that portfolio to just being used as like commercially later on in my life yeah no, I, the only art school that I've actually gone to, at least aside from the one that's here where I live, uh, is when I went to go talk to Ivan Brunetti down in Chicago. And that was the, uh, Columbia school of art down in Chicago. And that one seemed really cool. I really enjoyed the campus there. So I don't know if you've ever looked at that one, but I'm just throwing it out there because I've been there. It's the only, it's the only one that I can actually speak to. Whereas the other ones I can go, those are fine schools. I know nothing about them. <laughs> that's cool that you're putting the portfolio together. And I really, I never thought about the discord thing before or heard about the one that's in tapas. So that's all good advice. Yeah. I'm gonna have I to mean, go check there, that there, out. There's, there's several tapas discord servers or so I've heard that like people are just like, Hey, uh, fellow tapas creators join yeah. this server. There's no official one yet, but it's like, we have the forums anyway, so it's like no big deal. Right. And um, and I've almost forgot and like, to bring up the forums, so I'm glad that you brought that up because the forums are actually super helpful and very active. And I, I think that that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. Um, like, I think for my first year on Tapas, I didn't really touch the forums. I was like, yeah, I don't know. And then I checked it out and it was pretty interesting. I, I It's very active. And I hear that like even other people from other websites use, I think people from Webtoons, Although oh. uh, the website, like I've heard, I haven't really interacted much with them, but I've met like a couple of people 
they use the tapas form because webtoons doesn't have their own right so it's it's very active and you'll like see mostly tapas creators but like other people too yeah and it's unfortunate that webtoons is so much more prevalent or popular i think it's because of the name because interactively and uh even the site wise it's not as friendly as tapas is and i hate to be like you know trumpeting the tapas thing but on webtoons it's like you can't even i don't know i I don't need to get into it but i think that tapas is a much more like usable platform and of course i i've made several you know art art friends and like i've met people online and i get support from them and i've I, I find it very interesting and it, it's, it's enjoyable. Where can people, or where would you like to send people to check out your stuff? Yeah, I would, I would like for them to check out uh, my, my Tapas account and also my Instagram. So um, like I'm, I'm trying to change the URL to like be awesomeness studios, but I think because I signed in with like this Gmail account that I made like in middle school, like it's, it's tapas.io slash randomness one six six four eight. I'll see if I can try to change it, but right. Um, but like my Instagram is like awesomeness dot studios. Great. And then I want to thank you so much for uh, reaching out to actually be on the podcast. I was really happy that I was getting a chance to meet you finally. You know, ever since I like heard of the podcast, I was like, you know, it'd be kind of cool to like be be on it. I thought it was interesting. And then when you were um like posting like the scheduling i was like hey you know i'll I'll give it a shot i'm glad you did i'm really Mm -hmm. happy i got the chance to talk with you yeah i'm happy to be here and happy to talk 